tonight, Psalm 8, as we get started this evening, Psalm 8. Tonight, Psalm 8, we'll read all of Psalm 8, it's only a few verses, so we'll read that. Psalm 8, Psalm 8, I want to look at two verses, but we'll read the whole Psalm, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens and the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the path of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father, we thank you again for that word tonight. Lord, we, we do thank you tonight for thy word. Lord, I pray it will be an encouragement to us tonight. Lord, help me, I pray it will be an encouragement tonight. Lord, I pray that as we consider these few verses, that Lord, we, Lord, that we might somehow or other Lord, catch a glimpse of thy glory and how great thy grace is. Lord, bless, we pray in these few moments. Thank you for these that are here tonight. Lord, I pray again that you'll meet the need of their heart. I pray for those who could not come. Lord, some could not be here. I know John and Bonnie have traveled and have gone away, and we pray for them also, but <clears throat> Lord, we're here. Lord, we are here, and Lord, we really do need a blessing tonight, and we really do need to be encouraged tonight, and Lord, I pray that you would do that through thy spirit this evening. Lord, may we rejoice in our salvation. May we leave here tonight saying that it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord tonight. Lord, may we leave saying that I was glad that I went into the house of the Lord tonight. Lord, help us, we pray, in these few moments. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Lord, we beg of thee in these things. Amen and amen. Psalm 8 and verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, <clears throat> because of the Hubble telescope, they think, they think that there are like 500 billion galaxies. Now, we, we really don't have a concept of what a billion is. I've figured this out. It's probably isn't very scientific, but if you had $1,000 bills, and there are 16 to an inch. I don't know if there is. I'm just saying there is. I'm just saying that there is. If there were 16 to an inch, each one like a 16th of an inch, and there were 16 of them to an inch, you'd probably get more than that. But I'm just saying there's 16. If there were 16 that the, to make a 1 million, to, wait, to make 1 million, the stack would be about 50 feet high. That's how many a million uh, or thousand dollars. You get what I mean. Sixteen one thousand dollar bills to the inch, and it would take about fifty two feet to make a million dollars. Now to make a billion dollars, to make a billion dollars, same way. Sixteen one thousand dollar bills to the inch for one billion. Just a billion, not a whole bunch. Just a billion. There, it would be over five thousand feet high. A million is only like fifty feet, but a billion is like five thousand feet. Now, there are they figure five hundred billion galaxies. In those galaxies, there are each galaxy probably contains. 300 billion stars. Now, if you take 300 billion 
times 500 billion, you're going to get a big number. It's going to come out to 15 with 21 zeros after it. I know what comes after a billion, that's a trillion. I don't know what comes after, somebody says, a bazillion. Well, maybe so, I don't know. But it's 15, that's how many stars there are. There, there, there are 15 with 21 zeros after them. But look at this, if you would, real quick. In uh, Psalm 100 and Psalm 147, Psalm 147, Psalm 147. So there are, there are a tremendous amount of stars. I mean, they're just a ton of stars. I mean, they're just, you go out at night, we can't begin to comprehend how many stars there are. But look at Psalm 147, if you would, and verse 4. He tells the number of the stars. God knows how many stars there are. And, and there, there are 15 with 21 zeros after it. Look what it says. He called them all by their names. God knows every star by his name. And, and David says then in verse 4, back where we were, or verse 3, when I considered thy heavens, when I consider that, look at Psalm 19 real quick. Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verse 1. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. What, what, the heavens are telling us about God and the firmament showeth his handiwork day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard their line has gone out through all the earth and the words to the end of the earth in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun look the Bible tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God that takes us back to Romans chapter 1 real quick. I know we're jumping around, but look at Romans chapter 1. You probably know this verse also, but Romans chapter 1. There are a tremendous amount of stars. God knows them all by name. We have named some of the stars. But Romans chapter 1 tells us this, that the, the heavens declare God. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now, there are some people who are willingly ignorant of this. But God can be clearly seen from the creation of the world, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Listen, people say, well, I'm not sure there is a God. It's because they are willingly ignorant because the heavens declare the glory of God. How great God is. We can't begin to comprehend how many stars there are. We come up with a number 15 with 21 zeros after it. We can't comprehend how many that is. I mean, again, the, if we just had one billion thousand dollar bills, it would be over 5,000. Uh, uh, and if you figure that out, if, if you figure 16 uh, to the inch, and then there may be there may be 32 to the inch. I, I don't know. You figure it out. But 32 of them, and then multiply that times that number. It is an astronomical amount of stars that there are. And God knows them all by name. David is overwhelmed. In verse 3, when I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast made, David said, I, I'm overwhelmed by that. I, I, it just staggers the imagination about God and about what God has done. Surely our God is the Lord God Almighty. Amen? Our God is that. David said, when I consider that, when I think about that, about how great the universe is, just how great great the universe is about what great things God has done we know from Hebrews chapter 11 that the things which are were created out of the things which are not seen David said when I consider that he then goes to verse 4 and says this what is man David said when I consider how great the universe is and how great God is what is man 
Look at Job, if you would, for a moment. Job chapter 10, I believe it is. Job chapter 10. Job chapter 4. I'm sorry, Job 4. Job 4 and verse, what is man? What is man? Job 4, verse 19. Job 4, verse 19, how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay? Do you ever know anybody? Now, don't say you. Do you ever know anybody? I mean, that was poor. I mean, they were just poor. When I was a boy, I, I must have only been about 11 or 12 years old. I, we're about seven or eight miles from where the house was. There was a landfill. Now, somebody from the county evidently went out there with a big backhoe, a big bulldozer, and they just dug a trench out of it and and people would just come over there. It didn't cost anything. And, and they would uh, throw the garbage in. But then, you know, people, yeah, people started going over there and picking through the dump. And, and people were vandals over there at the dump. My cousin was one of them. But, so they hired a guy to watch the dump. I mean, they hired a guy to watch the dump. And I knew where he lived. I was only 11 or 12. I don't think I've ever seen anybody as poor as that in my life. He had a wife and he had kids. There was an old cement building. didn't even have a roof to it. It couldn't have been much bigger. I'm serious. It couldn't have been. It wasn't much longer than what that sound booth is back there now. It may have been a little bit wider. But it was no, and and they, they put a roof on it. And they weren't just poor. I, I, I mean, they were absolutely. And I remember my, we went by there one day and, and they were out there and my dad said to me, he said his wife had a little baby. And the baby died. And they buried it in a shoebox out in the woods. And I don't know how my dad found out about it, how did dads find out anything. I was only 11 or 12, and, but I have no doubt that that was true. They didn't live there very long before they came. And I can't imagine how much the guy must have made watching a dump. They were poor. I mean, he was poor. They had absolutely nothing. You go by there and they were, I mean, the kids were filthy. Now, somebody says, well, what's poor, preacher? Poor is, somebody says, well, you got more money than me, so I must be poor. No. What's the Bible say in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6? Having food and raiment, therewith let us be content. Old Mike, you say, I want to thank God for the clothes. I always want to say the food on my back and the clothes on my table. But it's the, it's the, the clothes on my back and the food on my table and the roof over my head. A man that's got that's not poor. These people don't have anything. But it says here in Job, verse 4 and verse 19, we're talking about what is man. David is overwhelmed by the universe. And if we took some time to think about it, we'd be overwhelmed by it too. And then, So then David, in the next verse, asks this question. What is man? Verse 19 tells us how much less, how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay. I know that our, our forefathers that went out west, there were no trees so they dug sod up, and they made bricks out of it, and they made sod houses. Dirt floors, sod houses. I, I don't know how they made roofs. I, I, I don't know, but, but that's poor. But the Bible says that we dwell, and we, we are tenants. Look real quick over at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We are tenants. We are, we take up a bode, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in, in, in a house of clay. What is it that God said in Genesis? We won't look at it, but Genesis chapter 2. The Bible says that God scooped up a handful of dirt 
The Bible says dust. Scooped up a handful of dirt and he fashioned the man out of it. The Bible says, it, God said to Adam in chapter 3, I believe it was like verse 19 or 20. He said that you're going, until you go back, you're going to work by the sweat of your brow until you go back to the ground. Because out of it thou was taken, from dust thou was taken, and dust thou shalt return. And then I think of Psalm, I, I believe it's, well, I'll, I'll find it in a minute. But Psalm that says, he knoweth our frame, it is but dust. We live in, we're tenants. We're, we're, we're squatters. And I was clay, uh, look what it says in, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I said years ago, earthen is dirt. A vessel is a pot. All we are are dirt pots, folks. That, that's all we are. Really. And, and scientists have figured out, they've broken down the chemical analysis of a human body and everything you can find in the ground, you find in a human body. All we are we were made out of the dust of the ground. The Bible says we're earthen vessels. All we are are just dirt pots. We're, we're tenants and, and, <coughs> and houses of clay. Look real quick, Job chapter 25. Look what else the Bible says. What is man? What is man? Job 25. Job 25 and verse 6. 25 and verse 6. How much less man that is a worm and the Son of Man, which is a worm. Not only, not only does the Bible liken us to being earthen vessels, to being dirt pots, squatters, renters, in, in houses of clay, but the Bible says that how much less man that is a worm. The Bible says we're a worm. I don't know if Carol remembers this. I remember this very clearly. I can still smell it. I set the worms on top of the stove one day, and one of them crawled out. Well, I didn't know it crawled out, and Carol began to cook. It was worse. Oh, I watched myself what I was going to say. I'm telling you, it was one of the worst smells I've ever smelled like. I can't say but it stank. I mean, it smelled a worm. If you break a worm in half, it'll, it'll grow back. They're great for fishing. I mean, you throw one on a line, go out with the line, you catch some fish. They live in the dirt. They eat dirt. They make the dirt better, but they're just worms. Oh, there's worms. They're not good for much. They make dirt a little better. God created them for a reason. They're good for fishing. We'll go over to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. So the Bible says that we are earthen vessels. We're dirt pots. We tenants and houses of clay. We're worm. What is man? He's a worm. Uh, Isaiah 46 and probably Isaiah 40. I can't read my writing half the time. And I did look it up. And uh, uh, yes, it is. Psalm 40, uh, Isaiah 40, I'm sorry. Isaiah 40 and verse 22. It is he that sitteth upon the earth, the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof, the inhabitants thereof are grasshoppers. They're grasshoppers. What is man? God says what man is. The Bible says that we are tenants in houses of clay. We live in earthen vessels. We are but as worms. We are as grasshoppers. David said, I am absolutely overwhelmed by the universe. 
by the greatness of the universe, about all that God has done. And so then he comes back to this question in Psalm 8 and verse 3 and 4. When I consider thy heavens, I am overwhelmed by the greatness of Lord God Almighty. The works of thy fingers and the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, which you have flung into place, that you know the name of every one of them. What is man compared to the universe? What is man when compared to the universe? We come into the world, come in naked. We know nobody. We know nothing. We own nothing. We are helpless. We may not stay this way. We're stupid. We just don't. That's how we come. We come in frail. That's how we come in. Hold your place right there in Psalm. We're going to come right back to it. But look over at Psalm, if you would. 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90 for a minute. Psalm 90, verse... Mm, Start in verse 7. Psalm 90, beginning in verse 7. We're reminded of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. It's appointed on them once to die. I mean, that's, that's, what, it, that's what we are. We're, when we consider the universe, Psalm 90, verse 7, for we are consumed by thy anger and by thy wrath, are we troubled? Psalm 90, verse 7. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in light of thy countenance. Verse 9. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. Seventy. And if by reason of strength they be four score. Eighty years. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off. It's pointed at men once today. For it is soon cut off. And we fly away. David said, I am overwhelmed by the universe. When I consider, when he says in verse 3, when I consider, when I go out at night and I look up at the stars, David says, when I consider that, I am overwhelmed by that. He asked that question. What is man? What is man? A grasshopper, worm, tenants in houses of clay, dirt pots, spend our years, we are here for 70 or 80 years, and then we are cut off, and we fly away. What is man? But notice what he says in verse 4. What is man? And here, here's, this is what's so great about this. David said, I am overwhelmed by the universe when I consider it. He then asked the question, what is man? Then, what is man? That thou art mindful of him. I've asked this question many times. There's only one answer that I know of, given in the Bible, why is it, why is it that God's heart is so knit to the heart of man? Folks, remember that verse, Jesus gave this verse, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage until the flood came and took them all away. But the Bible does tell us, tells us exactly the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 that the earth was corrupt and full of violence. It was corrupt. I, I dare say that we have a corrupt system of government. Violence run our own area. Man shot his own boy this week. Sadness. Of 
heartache. I heard this. I, I, I've heard, I heard this a, a little while ago. A while ago. A woman has five children. Found out her husband was cheating. Said uh, to him, let's work this out. Let's get some counseling and work it out. She said, I'm, I'm willing to forgive. Let's work it out. Next morning, he packed his bags up and walked out. That night she killed herself. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Why is it that God in his greatness even considers us? We who are the Bible says grasshoppers, worms, squatters in a house of clay, earthen vessels. David said, I am overwhelmed by the greatness of the universe. And when I consider the greatness of the universe, what is man? That thou art even mindful of him. I, read this I read this psalm again not just a couple of days ago when I came to that verse what is man that thou art mindful of him I was reminded of this for by grace are you saved I was reminded again the first time grace appears in the Bible is in Genesis 6 and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord what is man that God, you're so mind? What is man? Why is God's heart so knit with men that David said, when I consider the greatness of the universe, I am overwhelmed by it. The fact that God, you know every of the 15 to the 21st power stars by name. And we who are but worms and grasshoppers and livers and, and houses of clay and earthen vessels, God, I am overwhelmed by the fact, not of the universe, but that you would consider us. That you would send your only son. What is man? That thou art so mindful of him that you, Lord God Almighty, Send your son to die for us. When I consider the greatness and the awesomeness of the universe, and then I consider man and the greatness of God's grace, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. John says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is, and every, uh, we all know what grace is. We know what it is. God's, God doing for us, God doing for us what we just simply do not deserve. When I consider Thy heavens. When I consider it, when I think about it, when I think about how great the universe is, what is man that thou art mindful of him? David closes the verse 9. O Lord, our Lord, the same as in verse 1. How excellent is thy name and all the earth. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. How great is our God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again tonight. Lord, that you would even consider us. 
Lord, that you would consider us. When I consider the universe, how big it is, the expanse, the billions upon billions upon billions, billions of stars. And you know all of them by name. That you would even consider us. Lord, we ought to say thank you, God, every single minute of our lives that you would consider man. Lord, I, the only reason I ever found that you love us is just because, just because, there's not much of an answer. But you love us just because you do. And Father, how we thank you. Lord, I thank you for that tonight. Lord, I thank you that we can approach thy throne and come boldly to the throne of grace tonight. And our Father, which made the heavens and the earth and the universe, desires us to come that we might find help in the time of need. Lord, bless us. Help us now, we ask, as we go to our time of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.